In regards to the custom made paddles I've been using on my Sherman for a while now, they've been performing really well. Yes, they are all rusted up. However, the uh, I think it's 5mm steel, it's been holding up good. And then the 3mm steel for the actual pedal plate has been holding up okay. This one on the right does have a small bend in it. So we're going to do a big upgrade and make these a lot thicker. Having the tapered edge has helped a lot. I do scrape the pedal still a little bit considering we are jacking it up 22mm from the riser plate. They have been holding up really well and I'm very satisfied with them. Interesting to note the front of the pedal get it even grinding down with the back. That's quite interesting. This is the one that's bent at the back slightly. Okay. What we have here now is all the parts are made out of laser cut 5mm steel. As we can see that's a clean 5mm give or take. 5mm steel, 5mm steel for these and the bottom plates are going to be built very similarly. However, instead of using these riser little stud pins, I'm going to use recessed heat set nuts. Then I don't have to do any threading in the steel because that's very difficult after it's laser cut. And we will just be using three millimeter screws as the pedal tops. These aren't so bad and that's what Bagod used to use on some of their original wheels. So it will have a similar effect to these old school pedals, whereas the traditional new school pedals use these. And I was using these, so let's get these all inserted. Got our small heat set nut, and we'll just press this in. I'm going to do that to all of them. These edge ones should fit pretty good. That can go in a lot more. I was a bit concerned about the edge ones and I'm using a few different size heat set nuts that I've got here. I'm opting for these and these. The outer perimeter nuts I'm using are 4.6 wide with a 4mm hole drilled out. And they are 4mm long. And the inner nuts that I'm using they are 4.9 diameter. And they are substantially longer at 7mm. Now we've got all our heat set nuts in the bottom plate. We can then put the top plate directly on top. If this was a permanent thing I might put a finish on this but just a secondary prototype. Put that on there and now let's drop some bolts through. Starting to load some bolts in for these ones I am using M3 by 16s and they come through and they sit pretty nice. Wouldn't want much longer. And then the edge ones well we'll get to them shortly. That one's obviously too long. This is pretty sitting pretty good I'm pretty happy, however my top plate, I uh, had an issue with my printer, so my skew is off and it's off by about 3mm, so these top holes aren't aligning. I'm just going to have to oval them, but yeah, I had big melting issues on my printer. They are now resolved. When I printed the bottom ones, it was okay, but the top ones are way out and I'm not reprinting. M3 by 12 we're using for the outer edge bolts. I'm having a hard time because I had a lot of stretch in these two printed parts and we're getting there. Really got to make sure my printer doesn't overheat and stretch. So we've got our plate here with our temporary bolts holding it together and now we're just tapping threads. This is hard work. Not a fan of tapping threads especially on material has been laser cut. It was a 4.5 mil hole that I have then drilled out to 5 and tapping to 6. So just a slow process, quarter turns and then backing off. But you get a nice cut. Okay, so we know this is about 1.5 kilos, this is about 1.8. They're pretty much identical except for the side edges. I've left off the plastic bits there on this model. This is the latest model. And I don't have the toe plate on this one. just haven't manufactured it yet. Now in regards to this, I don't like this piece here because it's hard to cut that thread on the angle. So I've got two options. First option, I think I can recess this to be flat so it sits in there flat. And the other thing is I really want to add tilt adjustment 
and having two bolts come in here to a plate and I haven't been able to figure out how to do that and I just had some inspiration. If we look at the T4 here, what I mean by that plate, there's two screw holes here and then they go into a plate that you can adjust so you can get a different slope on your pedal from high camber to dead flat. Because the issues that I've been having with the old ones, I'm getting quite flat pedals and then you do get a bit of flex in them which makes them quite flat and I really want to get a higher camber option. So I think the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to remove this bolt altogether. I'm going to have a slot in. So this piece kind of slots in vertically like that. And then I can have a plate that's bent around and have the two screws access. I might draw that up now. It's really unbelievable how heavy this is. I reckon these are the heaviest pedals one of, that someone's made for an EUZ, being mild steel. So the steel parts alone are 1.3 kilos. And then the plastic parts account for 300 grams of plastic parts. And then the remainder is just some nuts and bolts. Rusty pin's about 90, 100 grams. This one's a bit shorter than what I'm using. I'd estimate about 60 grams for nuts and bolts. It is pretty disappointing that I just got all these parts manufactured, had them sitting around for a few months, got it built, gone through a heap of older revisions and parts, all plastic one, steel one, aluminium one, and I've just come up with the idea to change the way the pin sits horizontally across Oh yeah, look at this one. This is a flat design one. I don't know why I changed it. Wow. Oh, I see, yeah, this one's flat as well. I must have fucked up somewhere. Yeah, this flat design so much better from these old iterations. Man, what was I doing? What was I thinking? Why did I go to the curved one? Hmm. Maybe because the aluminium wasn't so strong and now I have three here. And it's so much stronger. That's probably why. Oh well, tune in for more.